Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I am finally doing an updated designer bag collection. This is the first one I've done in three years. So there are a lot of updates, most of which you'll probably already have seen in various sort of what's new in my wardrobe videos and review videos and all that kind of thing. Um, but yes, I decided to do an updated bag collection video purely because I had so many requests quest for one over the last three years. Now before I get started we are of course in an economic crisis around the world not just in the UK and so if watching a video that contains luxury goods, high price pointed handbags is going to make you feel in any way negative in your own mind space please do not watch the video um, it's not my intention to make you guys feel glum in any way, shape or form. Uh, so here is your chance to press stop and to go and watch a funny cat video <laughs> instead, something that might lift your mood. But for those of you that would like to continue watching, I am going to start off with my first brand, which is Celine. Right, first up within the Celine category is my beloved So Sangle. This is the larger of the two sizes that the So Sangle comes in. I bought this pre-loved of Festiere. It is black and it is in the grained calfskin. It's got a brushed gold hardware. I quite like a gold hardware because I wear gold jewelry, um, aside from my marital jewelry, of course. Um, so I feel like it goes with a lot of things that are in my wardrobe and goes with all my jewelry in general. Now this was a bag that I bought, when did I buy this? 2020 it was one of my famous birthday bags so for a few years I've sort of treated myself to a big sort of handbag purchase and I do try and buy the majority of my handbags pre-loved um, or second-hand but grand if you like to use my hashtag um, and this was one of them and it has been an incredible bag again I've said I've got a full review on this bag and it's Spoiler alert, it's a rave review because I think it's a really excellent bag. It's very versatile, it's a decent size, not too big, not too small. It's comfortable, it's got a wool strap and it's also very durable. So this is, uh, I suppose we're starting off with one of my ultimate favorite bags here. Next up is the Celine Edge. Now, this one is another bag that was bought pre-loved. It was actually bought from Bista Village in the Designer Exchange pop-up store, which I think, because it was a pop-up, I don't think it's there anymore, but I will double check, and if it is, I will write this information down in the description box below. Um, but they had a pop-up store there, Designer Exchange. They do also have online shopping as well, and they've got lots of little beauties like this. And this was one of those classic, Celine bags from the Phoebe era, of which of course we all know by now is my favourite era of Celine. And it was one of those bags that I'd had sort of on my wish list for a long time. And it was a bonus because I knew I was going to be able to get it secondhand because it was a bag that was no longer made new, if that makes sense. Now I haven't actually done a full review of this bag yet. And in all fairness, I haven't worn it loads. I haven't worn it as much as some of my other Celine bags or as some other bags you'll see from other brands in the video. Um, it is a bit of a tricky bag because it doesn't have a shoulder strap. It just literally has this one strap here. So it makes it, I would say, not the most practical of bags. But either way, it's still one of those bags where I look at it and it just it brings me joy because it's from that cult Phoebe era of Celine, which I just always thought was just incredibly classic. So there we go, that is the Celine Edge. Next up and staying with Celine and staying with the Phoebe era of Celine, it is the Trifold. Now this was a bag, gosh, in all honesty, I can't remember when I bought this. I think it might have been 2020 or early 2021 possibly. The colour I believe is called Havana, I think. I will double check and again I will clarify all of these little details down below in the description box for you guys. But this is another classic Phoebe era bag that 
I had on my wish list and I hadn't decided what colour I wanted and I basically just had an alert set up on Vestiaire for any trifolds that came up anywhere in the world and this one finally came up in the UK and at a price that I was willing to pay because I do like to haggle and I like to get a good deal if there is such a thing when it comes to luxury bags because they are a lot of money, I'm not going to shy away from that fact, this is a great deal of money to be spending on handbags. Um, but they're my joy. They're one of my one of my joys. So yeah, this this colour came up, and I obviously when you see it in a photo, there's always that risk of, oh, am I actually going to like it in real life? And that is just one of the risks with buying off Vestiaire, because of course you can't return items unless there was something wrong with authenticity or whatnot. Um, and so it arrived. Cut a long story short, and I loved it. I think it's a really great colour, and it meshes really well, sort of slots in and looks beautiful with a lot of the black that I have. And I've been wearing black recently. I know I haven't really been sharing a lot of my outfits online so much recently, just because we've got a lot of stuff going on. But this just, it, it sort of pops when you wear it against black. I feel like it's not on this, my main camera here. It's not really coming out as in, in the sort of rich color that you can see it in real life. But when I wear it with black or even with navy or even gray, it just gives this really nice sort of warm pop to it. Now I have done a thorough review of this bag, so I will leave a link down below in the description box for that video if anyone is curious and wants to know how I feel about it. Now onto some of my smaller Celine bags, and this one is the Celine Folco, and I think this is the Triumph Folco because it has the Triumph logo, which is that sort of cresty fleur sort of thing. I'm using all sorts of words there. They could <laughs> very possibly be wrong, but I know it is the Folco and I know it is the Triumph. And it's basically a really tiny little sort of crossbody. It's very practical, actually, this bag, even though I don't wear it very much. And the reason for that is because of this sort of monogram. It's very Louis Vuitton-esque and I had a moment where I loved that sort of brown canvas monogram and then I think I got over that and so even though this is Celine which is by far my favourite handbag brand, yeah I don't unfortunately wear this as much as probably what I should do for the price that I paid for it but I do have very favourite bags that I get a lot more wear out of than others and I'll go through phases as well of wearing one bag more than another one and then I might after filming this video you might see me wearing this one a lot because I've sort of rediscovered it and that's as I mentioned why I like filming these videos but it's quite a dinky bag so it's one of those bags which if I need to carry a lot of stuff around with me wouldn't be necessarily the one that I would go for and I think I have admitted in previous videos that I am more of a larger bag kind of girl. I do like to carry a big bag around with me. Now this is my final bag within the Celine category and I actually get asked about this quite regularly whether it be over on Instagram in DMs or someone might just leave a comment on a random video and I get asked about if I would buy it again. Now this bag was another bag that I bought pre-loved. I bought this one off eBay actually. I have two videos on this bag. One was uh, an unboxing of it and another is a thorough review. They are a little bit old. I think they're sort of 2018, I think maybe 2018, 2019. But there's a reason that I still have this bag even though it doesn't get as much wear as some of my larger bags. So in a similar way to the Folco, I just love this bag. I waited eight years to be able to buy this bag and for this very specific leather and very specific color. And of course, because it was very expensive, although I got it at a, a, a lower rate, if you will, because I bought it pre-loved. But this bag brings me so much joy, even if it's just to look at. I do try and wear it every autumn, winter season, and perhaps a little bit in spring as well. I don't go for this so much in summer. Don't really know why. Maybe it's because I sort of lean more towards a basket bag or something made of canvas, something a bit more summery. But yeah, this, oh, it just, it just makes me so happy because it's one of those items, I think, when I was working in retail and, you know, I'd look at 
designer handbags and it was just that for me was like the creme de la creme in some people's eyes it might be a Birkin but Birkins and Hermes in general aren't really my sort of cup of tea but this was always the sort of penultimate bag penultimate that's the wrong word isn't it this was just the ultimate bag not the penultimate the ultimate bag that I just my heart sings when I look at it and when I wear it. Now, for those of you long-term followers, subscribers, whatever we're supposed to call you guys these days, um, you will all recognize Judith, AKA my Loewe puzzle bag. This is the size small, the color, I call it tan, could be brown. I'm sure lots of retailers would call it different things. This has the silver hardware. I believe they have updated this bag now and it no longer has the feet on the bottom. So if that's the sort of style you like and you are in the market, you have the budget for this bag or you're looking for this bag specifically, I do personally think that the older version before they modified it is much better. So as always, I champion purchasing luxury goods, especially handbags secondhand. Have a look on places like Vestiaire. If you're in uh, the US or Canada, the Real Real. I've never used them, just as a full disclaimer, but I've heard good things about them. It's another place. And then any sort of independent secondhand stores online or physical that you may find and have at your disposal. So Loewe Puzzle, again, I have done a thorough review on this bag. It has been a long time favorite of mine, but since buying the Celine So Sangle and also a couple of my row bags, she has slipped down the list. Judith was always number one of my bags and I think that's when I liked, I think it was more so when I lived in London and I was going out into the city every day to breakfast and whatever, meeting PRs and doing businessy things <laughs> and I felt like I needed to be hands-free it was a good size I could always fit my vlogging camera in there back in the day when I did vlogs and so that's why it was always a really good go-to bag of mine but she has slipped down the list somewhat I think I tend to gravitate towards a black bag and something a little bit larger which is why she has slipped but I still love her and she is not going anywhere right now moving on to the row these are i've got two bags from the row and these are relatively new purchases or they're new from this year which again if you're a regular you'll have seen in some previous videos from the last i'd say six months i think this one was bought secondhand pre-loved off vesti air and i think i bought this in August maybe. I have used this a great deal. If you follow me over on Instagram you will have seen this has appeared in many of my more recent outfits and sometimes that happens when I get a new bag. It doesn't mean that I love let's say the Celine Sangle any less. It just means that because this one's new it's sort of flavour of the month. I will sort of chop and change between various different bags as I've already mentioned, but this one is definitely um, a favorite of the moment. I just love how it sort of forms to my body. It's really comfortable. I love the shape. I love it's got a tiny, tiny, you can probably barely see it, tiny, tiny little logo on there. And if you flip the bag around, you can't even see the logo, but I just find it very minimal, very visually pleasing. And it's also incredibly practical which is why I've been using that one a lot recently. And my second bag from the row is the Slouchy Banana, which of course was on my wish list for a good couple of years, two, three years, I think I, I said it was. Uh, this one's got silver hardware, so a slight change from my usual gold. I'm not actually sure if this one comes with gold hardware, so I just wanted this bag so much that I was willing to sacrifice my preferred gold hardware. Although you might have seen on my Loewe puzzle on Judith, she also has silver hardware and I think it works. I am not opposed in any way to mixing metals. I don't think there's a, a rule to say that you can't mix metals. Just wear whatever you like. This is a very practical but hands-free bag, which again, I've been wearing quite a lot recently because I love the way that it sits. And I've had various conversations with some of you sort of privately with regards to 
bust area and how this bag wouldn't necessarily be practical for many of you with a more ample bosom than I, but I love it. Wearing it over one of my sort of wrap coats, robe coats, is just very much something that I've been reaching for recently. And practicality wise, again, it's really good textured leather, so it's, it's durable, it doesn't show up scratches or scuffs very much. And it's, despite this sort of very odd shape, it's called a slouchy banana because it's supposed to look a bit like a banana, it does actually fit quite a lot in. So if I have sort of um, canvas bags that we use when we go shopping, I can stuff quite a few of them in here along with wallet, phone keys, lip balm, the usual kind of gubbins. And again, it's got like the Celine So Sangle, it's got a wool webbing strap, which is adjustable. So you can also carry it as a shoulder bag if that's sort of what you wanted to carry as as opposed to crossbody but I personally prefer crossbody. Okay moving on to my next brand now which is Joseph and yes I have two of the exact same bag it is the XXL slouch bag I think that is its name <laughs> I could be wrong now this one I bought new but I bought it in the sale a few years ago now this one I bought pre-loved last year because I liked this one so much and I know there'll be lots of you looking at them thinking they are almost identical well they are identical in terms of it is the exact same bag but let me assure you grey is very different to neutral beige they bring two very different vibes in my opinion anyway to an outfit now in terms of like the design of the bag it is an it's a very oversized bag it's got a really big strap but it is made out of really sort of supple leather very much sort of bonds to the body shapes to the body i do have stuffing in this one but it is a little bit it's looking a little bit slouchy but that's okay because it is the xl slouch bag and i just i love these it's a it's a really good sort of just stuff everything in there kind of bag really good travel bag and then a really good bag for carrying around a lot of snacks. So not particularly practical if you sort of have a day where, I don't know, if you were doing something like going to a theme park and you needed something a little bit smaller, um, but a good sort of everyday bag if you carry a lot of stuff around with you, which is why I have to. Right, this is a bag that none of you will have seen yet because I have just acquired this bag in recent weeks. So I haven't actually, I think today's actually the first time I sort of took it out of the dust bag since it arrived. We've got a big project going on in the house at the moment. So I've tried to keep everything in dust bags and doors closed. And so yes, it hasn't, hasn't actually been worn yet, but this is the Todd's dye bag very, very, very generously um, gifted to me from Todd's directly, which was really exciting because I haven't had a, a lot of dealings with like really big, these big designer brands. But for any uh, of the bags that have been gifted or I've perhaps had like a little gift card to put towards bag, I will leave all of that very, very clearly displayed down for each bag in the description box, just so that you are all aware of what has been gifted and purchased. And I'll also pop in there again, just a little reminder of what was secondhand. So yes, this is the Todd's dye bag. I believe this is the medium size and the color technically, although I would call this tan is called brown on the website or in store. Now, I haven't had chance to use this bag yet, but I've sort of played around with it. I, f I fondled it up in my wardrobe and it's really heavy so that's if if i get around to making a review video of this bag which a lot of you will know i like to use a bag for a minimum of three months and that's not every day but i like to get about three months sort of wear out of a bag so that i can get to know the pros and cons but if i was going to sort of go in with a con it's it's quite heavy that's because it's a really beautiful thick leather i think this would make a really good travel bag however i will of course have to use it as a travel bag to confirm that hypothesis because of that weight situation in there but it's it's beautifully made i mean todd's is one of those really old school brands again very very minimal just a really classic sort of shape tote bag it's got a zipper on the top um, a really subtle stamped logo rather than anything it's kind of like embossed 
um, on this little pad here. And of course you could turn it around and just have the completely plain side as well. So yeah, I haven't got a great deal of things to say about this at the moment, other than the fact that it's really beautiful. Right, this is the Pollen Numero Dix bag. I've had this now for, I think, just over a year, about a year and a half, I would say. And again, it's a really good little crossbody bag. That is what I would recommend this as. Not incredibly spacious inside, but if I just flip it around here so you can see the sort of depth to it. In comparison to my Loewe puzzle, I would say Loewe puzzle can fit a little bit more in there, but this is a really nice shape. It's a very good size for being a crossbody. I feel like it fits nicely. You can adjust it so that it fits more like the slouchy banana. So the sort of half moon shape sits sort of nestled in between your boobs. It's actually a very good city bag. If you live in a city and you're sort of concerned about having your belongings a little bit closer to you, again, if you don't carry a great deal of things, if you're on a city break and you've just got your, you know, card holder or wallet or purse, keys, uh, lipstick, a little bit of makeup or whatever you carry around with you, I think this is quite a good little sort of city break bag. Or if you are just a city goer in general and you don't need to carry around a laptop or loads of files and folders I think this is a really good bag because you've got the secure element of having the zipper on the top right so this is the little Lifner tall tulip bag tall tulip tote TTT this is the sort of taller stretched out version of the famous tulip bag from little Lifner, which they have in lots of different sizes uh, but the tote version is the one that has the longer straps, which is why I prefer this to the other ones. I don't own any of the other ones, but for me, if something, if a bag can't fit on the shoulder, it can be a little bit of a turn off, which as I was saying about the Celine Edge, it's a little bit tricky because then you've only got the option, especially if it doesn't have a shoulder strap, you've only got the option of holding it by the hand or like on the crook of the arm, which can be a little bit sort of tire, I say tiring, I suppose it depends on how much you carry. So this I think is much more practical. I actually wear this a lot more in summer. I couldn't tell you why. I think it's just one of those colors which goes really well with a lot of my summer linens. But yeah, it's a, it's a good little bag. It's got no safety on the top. So no like zipper or sort of pouch inside. It's just got this little popper which keeps it closed. So not the most secure bag, but I've never had any issues with it. And I've taken this out and about around London before we moved. I just love the shape. Again, it's really minimal. It is a smooth leather. So this is one of the very few smooth leather bags that I have. But so far, and I have used this quite a few times, even though I haven't um, really done any outfit photos with it recently. We have done a few, but not recently. But I have used it quite a bit and taken it out and more than likely bashed it around a little bit and it's holding up quite well. So yeah, this is quite a good smooth leather. But for me, this one, the sort of selling point was the color because it's just, I'd say it's sort of a khaki color, which is just really beautiful. And again, if you're wearing black, I love that sort of contrast of wearing black and then a lighter color accessory. And this just looks absolutely beautiful against black. Right, now on to my penultimate, and that is the right use of the word, finally, my penultimate handbag brand, Chanel. Now, both of these are vintage Chanel and they were both from Zoops. This one, some of you might remember, we made a video on actually the process of buying this off Vestier, and then I have a full review on this one as well, but this one came direct from Zoops. So this was just from Zoops, and this was from Zoops on Vestier. So Zoops also sell on Vestier. I know it's a little bit, but you get the gist. They are, yes, both classic flaps or whatever their style name is supposed to be called. I call them classic flaps. I think that's uh, the correct term. This one is the vintage mini square and this is the small size classic flap. Now this larger one is quite special and a little bit sentimental and I don't really get sentimental about things. 
I get sentimental about memories, not so much about things, but this is a bit of a sentimental bag. Simon bought me this for Christmas a few years ago. And so yeah, it's just, it's a special bag. And again, as I mentioned, we did make a video on actually finding this bag on Vestiaire and the whole purchase process. And I've also done a review on this one. This one I have never done a review of, but one thing I will say just here and now while I'm here, the difference between the two, strap length. This little classic, classic flap, although I've got the straps doubled up at the moment as a little handbag, um, when you put them, I can do it now actually, couldn't I? When you put it as a full length strap like that versus this one, there is, I know I've kind of gone off screen a little bit there, but you do get extra strap with this mini square. So the issue that I have with this one is that it's very difficult to cross body. So this tends to be more of a dressier, sometimes maybe an evening or an occasion bag. I think I've taken this to a couple of weddings that we've been to, whereas this one, as fancy as it is, I do feel like I can use as more of an everyday bag because it has that extra length on the strap for crossbodying. And finally, my last bag, it is the Ava bag size large by Wandler. Uh, this was another secondhand purchase. I bought this, I think it was 2020, it's either 2020 or early 2021. I think it was 2020. And actually this is also another smooth leather bag as well, which is again, a little bit surprising for me. And another black bag, which I know there is, how many have I got? There is a little bit of an abundance of black bags, but it's my go-to color. It's something that I just, I enjoy. I know some people think it's either boring or depressing, but. I like it and I think we should all spend our money on the things that we like and not what other people like. And that is my ethos. So this I bought in the large size and it is very large. It can sometimes be a little bit too cumbersome to carry depending on what I'm doing. If I know I'm gonna be doing something if I were going into London or if I was going to somewhere where there was gonna be crowds of people. I wouldn't use this bag because it is very, I mean, I'll turn it around to the side profile. You can see there, it is quite large and it's very structured as well. So it actually doesn't, you know, you don't want to sort of crease it and bend it in to make it a little bit smaller. So it is a little bit bulky, but it fits a lot in. It also is good for a laptop bag or that has no um, closure at the top. It is just open There's this little, sort of leather tab which threads through and closes it as such, but it's still easy for thieves to reach in there. But Wandler is a bag brand, which I think I featured in a video that was all about um, minimalist or minimal handbag brands. And it's one that I have got my eye on because there's a couple of other styles and they have some really beautiful colors as well. They've got very, very classic and easy to wear colors aside from black. And they do have some other bag styles, which I really, really like. So they're a brand that I often tend to keep my eye on just because I, I just really like them. I find them very visually pleasing, even though it's a brand that perhaps isn't as, or it's definitely not as prestigious as Celine or definitely not as Chanel, but it's a brand that I personally really like. Right, there we go. That is my current designer handbag collection. I have missed a few out, I say a few, I've missed my summer designer handbags out because they are currently stored away in storage tubs and I'm really sorry, but I just didn't want to crawl into the eaves today to go and get them out. So I've got my two basket bags by Loewe, got that in two sizes, and then also my woven leather dragon diffusion bags as well. So I've, I have missed those out of the video, but they are also included in my designer handbag collection. Anyway, thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.